I've been married for five years. I have two babies under two. Um, I own a business, I work in finance, and I've been doing that about 10 years. My husband um, is a machine operator and I make about three times his income. As far as the bills, we pay them proportionately. Um, but my question would be is how you know, to balance being the primary breadwinner as well as the head of the financial household, but still having him the head of our marriage and the head of our household in general. First of all, Rachel, congratulations. You're a part of a new majority of women who are now primary breadwinners. And so the first thing you get to do is really stand fully in this current moment. And you really get to have open communication with your partner. So if you want him to be the king of the castle, then you get to create that space and set the standard in your home. I love that you are already proportionally paying the bills. I advise that. And in chapter five of the book, Mind Your Business, it has a female breadwinner survival guide where other women who are in your shoes share how they are strategic at home. And lastly, for you, I would make sure that you feed your femininity. You've got two young kids, you've got a demanding career, and so we want to make sure that you're taking time to just feel sexy within your skin, wear your sexy underwear on your power meeting, so that when you get home, you're really able to let him sort of take the reins. All right, do you understand what she's saying? <laughs> yes. Okay. Sharia, I hear from a lot of financially successful women who are finding it hard to date because they make more money than their male counterparts. What's the best way for these women to navigate the dating world? One of the things in the book I talk about is the four C's of compatibility. That's characteristics, that's circumstances, that's chemistry, that's compatibility. And so the biggest distinction is we live in a world that tells you just to focus on the circumstances. Girl, how much does he make? versus really staying focused on the characteristics. Because right. there's a woman I include in the book, and she met a man at work, she was his superior, he had thousands of dollars in student loan debt, he had a hole in his car, he had scuffed up shoes, but she saw his character, she saw his heart. And do you wanna know what job he ended up having? President of the United States, Barack Obama. So Michelle Obama saw the character in him and said, you know what? you focus on the long term. So for women who are, are concerned about that, the research shows that if you find someone who has the characteristics and the qualities that matter, then you want someone by your side when life gets hard and you want somebody there to celebrate you. And so you want to check your checklist and make sure you aren't just focused on the financial, but really what does he bring yeah. to the table as a whole? Yeah, that, that's really, really solid right there. Look, I'm not saying you got to marry a project, but at the same time, everybody not going to meet Mr. Ready Made. Some guys, the woman is the missing link. Mm -hmm. It's that one component that he needs to really get over. It happened to me, it happens to a lot of men. And you know, you could be a successful man without a woman, you'll never be a great man without a woman. There are no great men without women, you know. I, th I think that's really great advice to look for the character of a man. Thank you very much, Sharia. Thank excellent, you. excellent, excellent. Thank excellent. you. Hey, this is the book. It's a powerful women's playbook for love and success. It's called Boss Brides. It's in stores now. You. you should go get a copy, ladies. We'll be right back, everybody. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're gonna enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.